So welcome to the M2 competition. Um, 405 horsepower, 406 foot-pounds of torque. I believe I got that right. Um, shout out to my buddy Zach for letting me drive it. Um, this is bone stock, which is nice. A lot of guys are tuning these and whatnot, so this one's bone stock. Um, this is not the same motor as the 1819. This is a totally different car from even interior, some interior aesthetics, all the way up to even the motor's different. They're using the motor from the actual F80 M3, the S55. So, let's see, this is a car that I've always wanted to drive. It has KW coilover, so it's not a fully, fully bone stock car. It still has, you know, it's not fully bone stock is what I'm saying. So let's put it in M1 mode, see how it feels real quick. Smooth. True DCT, not that ZF garbage ZF transmission that they're now reverting back to. You know, I had an F30 335i, and they were and they were rocking the ZF transmission in there, and then they went to a full. Um, so then they went to DCT, then they go back to the ZF transmission. It's like, what what are you guys doing? Can you make up your mind? This is a true DCT. This could be the last of a dying breed for this M2. Um, so this is not something, you know, to uh, take lightly in terms of the M performance. Wow, that's such a smoother pull than, whoa, that's a very smooth pull. That is not the pull that I was expecting from this thing, actually. Map. Wow, that is a very, very smooth pull. Huh. It's very different than the red line's a little bit shorter too. Or it's right at 75. It's the same red line actually as an M3 that I just reviewed, the new G80. But huh, the power band feels way smooth. Yes, it's quiet and stock, but it's smooth. Like, man, the DCT on these M cars is just, it's its so good. See, this is what I was saying in the last review that I was doing was, why not refine something that already works? You know what I mean? Why not refine something that is already, you know, working well, you know? And th that's the problem with some of these new manufacturers. Like I stated in my last video, you can watch it, which was, you know, they already have the blueprint to success, but they don't want to, you know, enhance on it. They think building a new blueprint, a new car, a new chassis all in itself is the better option, which it's not. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is how, how this car, let me see here. I want to make sure I know where the heck I'm going. Okay. So, Another thing about this car that I noticed is the interior is really nice. Um, the leather is like that old BMW leather that they used in the car, so it's soft. It's like, you know, it's very soft and like real feeling, so to speak. It doesn't feel like cheap leather. It feels actually like real leather. Dang, this thing is smooth. I can't wait to see these couple corners up here that are coming see how it really feels in the flesh because here's the thing this is a little bit heavier than the previous gen but it kind of makes up for it in in the power and the smoothness and the delivery and it has different suspension the suspension is more tuned it's a little more dynamic it's a little more um track oriented this is a car that you can live with every day in track and the visibility in this thing is amazing it's so nimble it's crazy how it feels oh my god that bend there just planted not what i expected from this car especially after jumping out of that g80 m3 it's hmm, it feels really good interesting i'm kind of trying to gather my thoughts on how this thing feels it's, does it feel 
feel necessarily as I thought it would. than the G80 that I drove which is odd because you would think that car would feel more planted this is so weird this is not something that I expected from this car actually huh. but granted it the only modification it has is different wheels and tires and suspension yeah but you know you've been watching some of the reviews I've watched on this thing people are were still kind of saying the same thing in regards to um, how they saw the this car in terms of how, how, how it felt even with the stock suspension it, it still felt like this very nimble feeling like it's crazy how smooth it is it's it's very odd I, i'm not even saying it's odd it's just a great engineering feat by bmw because it's weird how the m2 competition which is technically the M3 is the successor. The M3 is supposed to be better in terms of the way that they're grading these cars, the MSRP. I don't think the only competition that this car really has is probably a used F80 M3. There's really no car under a $70,000 MSRP, which is these are hovering between 60 and 70, depending on how you option them. There's no really car under a $70,000 MSRP that can actually do what this car does. a very very good car this is nimble it's light it's dailyable you could beat on it all day at the track while getting 25 miles per gallon on the highway and i think it was 19 city zero to 60 in 4.0 seconds flat i'm sure you could you know depending on driver and tire setup and conditions that day this thing is probably breaking a three second zero to 60 time i, I don't doubt it whatsoever um th this is definitely something to consider because there's no nothing else really in in the reins of an m2 competition that is this nimble, this light, this agile, this good on gas, this comfortable. This thing is smooth as hell with these KW coilovers. I'm sure this factory suspension probably feels very similar. Maybe even a little better since these KW coilovers are dropped even lower, but then, you know, factory ride height. But damn, this thing is crazy how good it feels. It's it's all, almost mind blowing. And the power delivery, yeah, it has less horsepower than the G80, but it's more like smooth. It almost feels like a naturally aspirated car. 405, 406 horse with 405-ish torque, give or take one, one, one percentile on that torque or one decimal, whatever you want to call it. But huh, this is very interesting. It feels very good. Downshifts are smooth. The car does not get unsettled on the downshifts at all. Hmm. Let's see how it feels here. Downships, just smooth. Yes, the car is very quiet. It's not loud. It's it's very mm, just under the radar. But you know, as I get older, the quieter sometimes these cars are getting, and the drivability, especially if you're dailing them and stuff, it's kind of is becoming a little more enjoyable. Um, I'm not a big fan of the farting and the cracking and all the crazy tunes that people put on these cars. I'm not really a fan of that. I, I, I enjoy more so the true driving experience not like this animated fake sound where people are like oh my gosh let's pump in noise let's let's do this let's do that or let's make it artificial not 
make it seem what the car really is you know what i mean and, and that's the unfortunate side this is truly like a true driving car right here this is not like a gimmick so to speak th this is a true driving m2 competition this is a car that can hold its own on the track all day this this is the car you know my audi rs5 right now is for sale i've been waiting to drive one of these thanks to my buddy zach for letting me drive it and review it um while we go over to lunch here i'm starving and gosh this thing is just good like let's see the top like this is third gear at 3500 rpm and then just step on it instant power delivery and there's really no lag oh my goodness it's so smooth it's crazy and the brake pedal feel on these steel brakes like the brake pedal feel to be honest the brake the brake pedal feel feels better than my gp3 it's more touchy it has more grab it has more bite i'm sure once you get my gpd on track and those steels and those pads really start getting going i'm sure it's a little bit different but this is out of the box you know not even pushing the car this is out of the box brake pedals are so touchy they feel so nice Jeez, bmw it's funny how you guys can not really do well on the m3 and then do so well on an M2 competition, which is the lesser car, so to speak, in your lineup from a price point and actually the M3 being some, the successor, the predecessor, whatever you want to call it, the one up from this car. This, this is truly funny how you guys are doing this, you know? And it's even more funnier how the interior of this car feels better. It feels more sound. Um, which I didn't think I was going to say that, actually. I, I thought it was going to be lesser of you know the m3 but you know th this car you could feel like you know i'm not going to throw it around on the street and start getting it sideways and turn traction control off obviously but this car you know some of the other reviewers that i've watched like a chris harris for example th this is a nimble car you could feel it and it has so much mechanical grip that you can also feel too that i think that's one thing that the that bmw is really good at is out of the box delivering this amazing mechanical grip and having it in a way where it's set up to have from the factory out of the box so much mechanical grip where you could go rip on the track with stock suspension you don't have to modify anything i think that's kind of the nice part about these cars is you don't have to modify you don't have to necessarily um for these cars to necessarily be of performance capability you don't you don't have to modify them i think that's probably the most important part you know you're going to spend 60 70 thousand dollars on a car why am I buying suspension? Why am I buying a tune? Why am I buying all these aftermarket things to make it better than it should have been from the factory? Listen, if I'm spending 60, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars on a car, I don't want to have to go buy those things afterwards. I want to buy them if I want to get some crazy horsepower numbers, really push the car to its limits, and take away from. I, I don't want to take away from the engineering because there's hundreds of millions of dollars spent in engineering on these cars. They should be coming out of the factory, beautifully beautifully performing looking etc this car is the best looking car in the m lineup hands down right now they're only making them for two years it's the m2 cs which is coming out next well it's already out the m2 cs has more horsepower bump i think it's right around the 460 mark if i remember correctly that's coming in a manual transmission as well that's more that m m3 c or m2 competition cs stands for club sport it's more of a track oriented setup um i'm really considering the club sport right now you know once my rs5 sells I wait a couple months. I, I'm I'm gonna really research some more cars on what do I want as a daily and what do I want as a car that's you know delivering a, a nice performance and track oriented setup. What is that? That's probably an M2 Comp. You know, I got an AMG uh, GTR next to me. Wow, what a beautiful car too. That's actually a car I really want to review. Uh, sounds great. Jeez, two AMG GTRs next to me. Wow. This must be an AMG thing. So, all in all, I'm pulling into the parking lot about to get lunch here. I would totally buy this car. Just off the short drive that I went on, I didn't really push the car hard. I didn't get it into canyons. I, you know, this is, this is just a true first drive, getting in the car, driving it. It's so smooth that you don't think it's going to be rigid. It's so rigid that around corners and, and stiff and when, when you start pushing it a little bit that I've noticed, you don't think it's going to be this smooth. It's literally so drivable and so smooth coming down these roads right now that it's actually smoother than my RS5. 
it feels really good and I think that a car like this it's, it could be one of the last unless BMW really changes what the hell they're doing and what's going on it could be one of the last chances that BMW has in, in terms of building a true driver oriented car from the cockpit the way the steering wheel is set up the way the, the size of the steering wheel the way the car feels that this is this is a buyer's car like if you're considering buying an M2 competition don't don't buy the previous version they're using the M55 motor in there that don't no offense to anybody that has that I have a friend that has it but I'm sorry that's not the car there's a reason why that car is 40,000. There's a reason why this one's 60,000. From the differences of interior, the gauge cluster, the suspension setup, the bigger brakes, the different wheels and tires, the different in the true M3 motor from the F80 in this thing, obviously detuned. Um, th this is a totally different car than the pre pre previous version M2, which was the 1718, and then the 1718 going on to I believe 19, and this is 2020 2021 M2 competition. Uh, I may have overlapped the years there, um, but off the top of my head, M2 Comp, buy an M2 Comp. They got rid of the M2, so you can't buy an M2 anyways unless you buy a used one. M2 Competition, this this is definitely the car. You know, I, I can't wait to go hopefully maybe drive one of these on a track. Um, I don't know if BMW does a driving experience. I know Porsche does. I think BMW might. You know, I'd love to figure out where they have a driving experience. I, I really want to take this car on true either canyon roads or a track setup. The, the, this is very good. I know this is a shorter review, but walk around in the car will do right now when I park it. This is Hockenheim Silver. So Hockenheim Silver... This is like a color between a mineral white slash chalk slash white. Um, th this is a this is a pretty badass color. Hockenheim silver is like cool. It's like it's it's very cool. It has like a interesting look to it. Very aggressive front end, front bumper. It's different from the pr previous shirt version M2. Very different in terms of styling cues. It's more aggressive looking. It's more track oriented. It's more meaner when it's rolling at you down the street. It's a little bit wider. It has a different stance. There's a lot of differences in this car. It's kind of like the comparison I did between the 991.1 and the 991.2. This is like the dot two version of the M2. Do a little walk around video of the car here. Talk about the outside, but. Um, all in all, I, I want to buy one now. Um, it's so smooth. It's so good. And the gas mileage is so good too. I kind of look at that too. The GT3 gas mileage, I got a video coming out of that thing where the gas mileage on the GT3 was insane. It was like 22 miles per gallon, Probably like 450 miles on one tank. But anyways, we'll do a walk around video and then we'll call it a day. This color is almost like a mineral white slash uh, Nardo slash chalk slash white. I love the HRV wheels. A lot better interior for sure. This is that new, this is that new gauge pack that I was talking about. Dollar bill must have been at the strip club. It's all touch too, which is nice. The previous gens were not touch. See, this is like real leather. It's smooth. It's like soft here. You can feel. Look how soft that is. Carbon. A little plastic here. It's fine. Like it, it flows well with the like little titanium-ish bezel. Nice steering wheel. He upgraded the little shifters, which is cool little room in the back too it doesn't drop down fully so you could have some people up there with the beveled roof so yeah quick review thanks for watching we'll do a real review on this thing on a track soon i'm sure